Mr. Dufresne, describe to me the realisation that you had with your life the night that your OP results came out. Well, I was bitter. My OP results reflected what I already knew. I'd messed around in high school. It meant that if I wanted to study law, I was going to have to go to Griffith. And what was your response? I told myself I wouldn't go there. I'll see you in hell before I see you at Griffith. Those were the words you used, Mr. Dufresne, as outlined in the sworn testimony from your group chat. They say so. I don't really remember. I was upset. What happened when you and your parents argued? Well, they told me to get used to the fact that I was going to be going to Griffith. Ah, Griffith University. A third-rate Queensland uni. Did you go there? I went to the open day. It was so disconnected. Filled with students that didn't get into the better unis. I just walked around, sat down, and I waited. With what intention? I'm not sure. I was confused. Mad even. I think I was just there for the free stuff. Did you get a water bottle? I did. Man, I really wanted one of those. When you first got your OP, you were accepted into Griffith University, is that correct? No, I didn't. I realised it was a shit choice. I decided I wasn't going to go there, even if it was my fifth preference. Fifth preference indeed. First UQ, second QUT, third Harvard and fourth Bond, and you didn't get any of them, did you? I didn't. I wanted to study law, learn the skills, not end up at some Griffith campus in Nathan. I feel I've been very clear on that point. Yes, you have. But the part where I get a little bit hazy is when your parents walk into your room, find you curled up in bed next to your OP score with an empty Uber Eats bag next to your kebab sauce all over the sheets and an empty bottle of your parents' Bundaberg rum. Does that strike you as a disgusting situation, Mr. Dufresne, or is it just me? Yes, it does. I'm sorry, Mr. Dufresne, I don't think that the jury heard that. And you claim that you rejected the offer to study law at Griffith after the first round of applications were due. That's rather convenient for you, isn't it, Mr. Dufresne? It's the truth. You recall your high school teacher's testimony. She dragged you through there for three years and barely a good grade was achieved. So I think it's a fair comparison between your poor OP score and the kebab filth and empty bottles in your bedroom. That's also rather convenient, isn't it, Mr. Dufresne? Well, since I didn't believe the results that I got, I find it decidedly inconvenient that my marks weren't higher. Ladies and gentlemen, you've seen all the evidence. You've seen all the facts. We have the accused and his OP score. We have his marks from high school. We have comments from his teachers from high school. He is a sinner. He is a sinner. But was his crime so great as to warrant studying law at Griffith University? I suspect Mr. Dufresne's answer to that would be yes. I further suspect that on the night the OP results were released, you ordered Uber Eats, you drank your parents' liquor and stayed in bed all day. When you think about that, think about this. An OP score provides many opportunities, even if it is only an 18. But I subject to you that this was not a hot-blooded crime of passion. This was more of a cold-blooded affair. You turned your back on your first four university offers. Then you turned your nose up at your fifth 
to study law at Griffith. You're all good, honest, hard-working, God-fearing university folk. I think you all know what to do. <clears throat> you strike me as a particularly icy and remorseless student, Mr. Dufresne. It chills my blood just to look at you. By the state of Queensland, I order you to study an arts degree at UQ as a result of your actions. And so be it. Well, at least it's not Griffith. <laughs> <laughs>